Howdy, I'm Jason, and this time on the Auto Edits channel, I'm gonna be introducing you to my new accidentally acquired daily driver, this 2013 Range Rover Sport GT. And we're gonna do a little proper tire rotation, a little routine maintenance. I'll probably do an oil change because I like doing stuff like that. And I'll show you kind of what I do when I acquire a new vehicle, the, the check over, like the, the get to know you part of this thing. Now, if you're looking to just get to right to those things, I do a pretty good job with the chapters. So just go ahead and click on right along the bottom there to get to the task that you would like to get to. So in this video, I'm gonna show you the technique I use to get this thing off the ground, four tires in the air, so we can do a proper cross tire rotation. These are the items you're gonna need to do a DIY tire rotation on this vehicle. Now, three and a half ton jack stand should do your job. This is a 5,000 pound vehicle, so you're gonna be fine with that. Um, I'm gonna use a 7,000 pound jack only because this needs to lift the vehicle pretty tall on this thing. That's the only reason I'm using my heavy duty jack. I have a few other smaller jacks that would be fine lifting the vehicle, but we need the height. We need the actual heights to get this thing off the ground. So that's why I got my big dog jack out here. And then you'll need a 22 millimeter socket, a torque wrench. I recommend torquing your lug nuts when you're done. And I'm gonna use my impact driver. This is something, if you're gonna do DIY mechanical stuff, get yourself a good heavy duty impact driver. And I'll show you the proper way to implement this into this routine as well. So this is the basic stuff you're gonna need to do this. And these are things that are good to acquire if you want to start doing some DIY stuff around on your vehicle. And for my Jeeper friends here on the channel, the Jeep is doing fantastic since that big tune-up repair oil cooler. I've done some grueling LA style commuting in the thing uh, for work last week. It performed perfectly. So it is officially back in the mix and ready for adventure. So the Jeep is great, strong like bull. Here are some of the key specs for the little Rover Sport. The GT package simply means a few fancy bits on the exterior, none of the complex anti-roll bar system in the underside, a fairly sporty feeling 5 liter V8 gasoline direct injected engine, a unique suede interior, and this one is currently sitting at 159,000 miles. Yeah, that's a lot. This is a unique vehicle because it has independent suspension all the way around, which makes it a drive and ride phenomenal. Uh, it makes it a little bit trickier to get this thing in the air. And there seems to be a bit of confusion on what to do with the airbags. This has air springs at all four corners. And so uh, the manual says to put it in extended mode before you jack it, but I don't like that. I've done it all three ways, lowered with the airbags dumped in access mode, like it is in standard height and then extended mode. And when you lift the thing with the airbags full of air in extended mode, it you actually have to lift the thing even higher off the ground because it really pushes that, that uh, suspension out. So I like to have this thing only as high as it needs to be. When I had it in extended height mode, I had to have the jack one more up like that, another inch or so higher because it's forcing the suspension at full droop. You'll see when I get it off the ground now that I don't have to. The quick reference here, the lift point for side to side is right about at the door seam right here, right behind the driver's door will go. And on this one, there's a little white dot here. I don't know if that's relative to that, but we're gonna go ahead and jack it up. Now our jack has a good purchase. We can go ahead and jack. Now we'll go ahead and get our front. So you notice it's lifting a little bit nose heavy right now. So we'll go ahead and get our front jack stand in place. And you'll see right here, there's a little hole and that's where the stock jack would go. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that jack stand right in that place there. I'm gonna use this part of the frame rail right as it kicks inwards. There's a double, there's a doubler there. And there's a little notch right here. I'm gonna use that part for the back. And then we'll just carefully go down. You'll see the front. That was a little faster than I would have liked. Go down. So I make sure that your jack stands look, the frame is just seated right inside that little saddle. We look good. Same drill on this side. We'll just go on up here. And again with this jack, 
you just need this extra height because there's a surprising bit of articulation on this thing. There's a lot of down travel. I'm digging it. Down we go. It's time now to give the car a good shake because if it can't withstand this, you don't want to be under it. So we seem solid. I'm, I feel secure enough that we can now go ahead and enact the tire rotation. Now, if you don't have an impact gun to remove your tires, it's a good idea to just get a half inch drive socket. 22 millimeter is what these lugs are. On my impact, I have a 7 8 inch impact socket, which I'll use. And the tip here is before you lift it up into the air, loosen the lugs if you're gonna be using a manual wrench like this. But I have this superpower here, so we'll do that. And we can pull our tire off and look at it. So I'm looking at the date code on this thing and it says 0920. So that means ninth week of 2020. And it looks weirdly old for only a three or four, well, it's 2024, three or four year old tire. It's kind of kind of haggard. That's why I was thinking about putting this on the back. That's kind of what I like to do is I like to have my best tires on the front just because it steers the vehicle and I want good tight reliable tires these are kind of kind of haggard they don't look that good um but here's the other thing to look at look at tread wear across here so you look for alignment problems cupping uh you know bald spots that are go around some of the rims here they're even they're wearing pretty evenly i like that about that that means that everything else on the suspension must be pretty good so uh that i like so this is the back tire off the passenger side here and you could just see the physical difference here now the interesting thing that I'm just looking is the date code is the same 09 2020 why do they look so dramatically different uh checking wise with all of the cracks and all that that's just I'm kind of confused on that someone can enlighten me in the comments for sure this one has plug in it right here I checked this one no plugs no big deal on that thing I plug tires all the time Another thing that's funny to observe is how much brake dust are on these things. Now, when I got this vehicle a few weeks ago from my sister, she had it detailed and it was absolutely immaculate, totally spotless before I picked it up. And this is just a few little bit of com commuting, a couple weeks of commuting in LA traffic. And yeah, that's no good. Uh, I already ordered some PowerStop Z36 pads and rotors for this thing. So I'll bring you in and show you why that got bumped up on the list, not just because of the that. As for the rotation pattern, there's two trains of thoughts for four wheel drive slash all wheel drive vehicles. And one is to just cross. This would be the, called the right front tire, goes to the left rear, left rear tire comes here. And then likewise, so it's just a diagonal cross. But what I've been doing with great success on all of my uh, all wheel drive or you know four wheel drive vehicles is I do a front cross to the rear and the rears come straight forward. So that basic pattern is rears go straight forward to the front and the front cross over to the rear. Very, very simple. And I like that pattern, it's worked well for me. So this tire stays here, this tire goes across. seem to have been way over tightened. And this one goes right to the front here, but we're gonna stage it. Again, looks really good. And we have a different date code here. What do we have? 3221, so this is late 21. So this is definitely the newest tire. It looks it, has a nail in it right here. We're gonna pretend we didn't see that. <laughs> but that's my luck right there. The newest, freshest, good, goodest looking tire has the one with the active nail right through it so other than that we're looking good so i'm gonna go ahead and plant this right here get this ready but let me bring you in and show you uh, a quick observation on the brakes here there's a ton of material left on the pads which is great but then there is a substantial lip 
on the edge of the rotor. And that just means that there have been multiple pad changes and they never turned the rotors, which means that they would surface this flat. And so they're just kind of embedded in and the inside lip is even more substantial. You, I don't even have to see it. I could just feel I can catch much more of my fingernail up inside there, back back in there. So that's no good. And the way that you'll feel this, and what I notice, is that the brakes are a little grabby right on application. So right at the top of the, the pedal as you get into them, uh, the brakes tend to grab, and then they kind of settle into a nice feel. The brakes are actually very good on this thing. Uh, it's just, and that's because the pad is now sitting in a, basically a giant groove here rather than along the surface of the road or smoothly along the surface of the road or, and that's all that is, but they, they're, they're functional. This is just something we want to address because I'm, I'm pretty certain that this, at this big of a groove is gonna be out of spec. The back pads have plenty of material on it. The rotors are, have a, a lip on them, but it's nowhere near as bad as the front, but we do have to do a quick adjustment back here. My second day of driving this thing, I went to set the parking brake and a horrendous noise came out from underneath and a whole bunch of lights popped up on the dash. I did the maintenance release routine, which got the vehicle back on the road. And after a deep dive on the internet, I found that if you adjust the parking brake shoes correctly, you could possibly avoid having to replace all of the electronic parking brake mechanism or even the gears inside that. So find the barrel adjuster. I put a little over four full rotations on that thing to get the parking shoes to touch the rotor. Then you rotate that little access window up to a four millimeter Allen bolt. Simply release that until you hear a little click. That's the parking brake spring settling back into position. And then you cross your fingers and hope for the best. Now I'm not gonna tighten them with these. I'm just gonna get the wheel snug down with this. And then once we put it on the ground, then we'll get the torque wrench and put these to 105 pound feet of torque. So that is just barely. Now, this is what I'm listening for for the parking brake adjustment just an ever so slight bit amount of drag there. So I wanna be able to spin it and hear that the, the pads are touching. And then that way they're close to deploying when you actually hit the button. So we'll see when we get it on the ground. This is all a learning experience for me. It's so refreshing to have such light wheels. I'm used to those big old Jeep tires. Perfect. Time to get up under its naughty business and see what we're working with here. And right off the bat, look at this transfer case. Not a leak on it. How is that even possible? 160,000 miles? That looks fantastic. Definitely on the list. I'm gonna wanna change the fluid in that for sure. That'll be soon. Transmission doesn't seem to be leaking. There's a little indication of some leaking here, but when I was going through the receipts, because my sister kept very good documents at the dealer, there was a valve cover gasket leak that has recently been repaired within the last year. So that would be potentially remnants of that maybe, but there's no active drops coming out, which is great. Let's go on back. Our prop shaft looks good. Look at the rear differential. No leaking there on the rear differential. Looking forward to changing the fluid back there. Definitely doing some research on trying to get a better exhaust. It actually sounds really good, uh, but always can sound a little bit better, sportier. But boy, the underside of this thing looks free and amazing. If you ask me, wow, I lucked out here. I lucked out big time. Thank you, Jamie. So we'll look at the CV boots. That one's good. They all look really quite good. Everything looks good on this thing. Needs a trailer hitch. That's fine. Look at all this crazy stuff up here to dampen the ride. This is why these things 
are so amazing. This thing is an absolute wonder down the road and is so much fun, but look at the over-engineering, these, these giant weights for dampening the, the ride and the body mounts having a shock. Is that what I'm seeing here? Is this some sort of damper on the body mount? Yeah, it is. This thing's mental. I get it. I get it why you people love these things. I do too now. It's absolutely amazingly good. Time for an oil change. You don't have to remove that sweet looking dual intake tube for an oil change, but I'm doing some sightseeing here. I wanted to see how dirty the throttle body was and shoot a little cleaner down inside there because that's how I roll. And since this vehicle sat for a good amount of time before I got it, there was a lot of rodent dwelling evidence throughout the engine bay. I removed the hood insulation pad since it was drooping anyway and found a fairly large nest. From there, it was pretty easy to figure out why the windshield washers didn't work, chewed up wires, repaired those. That led me to inspect the cabin air filter under the dash, which ended up being pretty clogged up, and I also discovered some more mouse house material in the ductin. Now back to the task at hand, oil change and oil change related accessories. One of the quirky little things about this rig is that there's no dipstick. And so you have to check the oil by using the computer. You're supposed to be able to suck the oil out of that tube under the fill cap, but I don't own a pump large enough for that job yet. So underneath I go with a 13 millimeter wrench to remove the skid plate under the oil sump. And drain plug. Let's get tropical. Now that I have the drain plug out and I have drained all of the oil out of the pan with the truck sitting kind of level here on jack sands, uh, I'm gonna use this pump, my brake pump, just cause this is just what I have here, and suck out of the tube and see if it gets any. And that way we'll have a direct comparison that it actually is efficient and actually drains more than the drain plug. So let's put some suction on this. All right, look at that. We are getting oil out of that thing. Holy mackerel. Well, you know what that tells me? I'm not draining it out of the pan next time, taking that skid plate off. So this is fun little proof of concept here. So just in case the interwebs want to know that much more out of the tube here than the drain plug emptying the pan that way. Pretty cool. So that gives me the reassurance that that is an effective oil change, that that gets sucking the oil out of the top. I'm definitely doing that the next time because that's gonna be one of the things I am gonna stay way ahead of is oil changes. Every four or 5,000 miles, that's, that's what I'm gonna do. So knock on wood, it just keeps running and we don't have to do timing change for a while. So there you go, kind of fun. Next up, I swapped out the oil filter cartridge. Fairly straightforward routine on that line item. Quick tip, I only go hand tight on the plastic housing. I also bought fresh air filter elements and after getting the approval of my helper, went ahead and installed those, even though the ones that were in there were in pretty good shape. Oh, do I see? We do have one leaky. So here we are, we got one leaky CV on hole in it so we need to put that on the list passenger front cd boot We'll put this on just because feeling lucky could be the kiss of death. Okay. All right, let's start it. Oh, well, good. Let's go see uh, if we're good outside and underneath. Everything sounds great, so there's no gushing oil underneath. 
Sounds perfect up here. Sounds just like it did, but I feel good because it's got a fresh bunch of oil. And then what you have to do is let it sit for 10 minutes before you could actually check the oil level to get an accurate reading on the dash. While we're here, we're gonna test the parking brake and see if we did it. <laughs> I'm scared because last time I pulled this, it started shrieking and made all kinds of noise. So let's do it. It did it. Oh my gosh. All right, well, actually, here's the test. Let's release the parking brake. Oh, it did it. I'll take that huge, as a huge victory for me because I didn't want to have to get in there and replace those gears. That's what you kind of see all the time. But then one rabbit hole I went down said, well, just do the adjustment on the actual parking brake inside the, the brake rotor and redo it. And sure enough, that got it. So there you go. Whew. Got a CV we still got to deal with, but the parking brake operational, we'll call that good. Being super thorough here, the door says that it wants 42 PSI in the rear, 38 in the front, so let's adjust that. It gives me a chance to show off my power tanks uh, uh, air filler. I, I've been so stoked with this thing. Ever since I got that shock kit, be warned, as soon as you go with the power tank stuff, it's not cheap, but it is the best. It just feels good, and check this out, okay? Let's see, we're at 38 because that's just how I had it set up before. Let's go to 42, call it good. Forty-two point five, forty-two bounces down to 42 and we are golden. This little chuck right here is so nice. Being able to just have that fit and seal and be relaxed is really fun. So if you guys are auto edits, Jeep fans, don't worry. This thing is now, this week did its shakedown. It is fully back in service. Time to take it out in the dirt and get an adventure under our belt on that. This thing, I'm stoked. This is a really cool car. It's gonna be a wonderful city beater commuter, maybe set it up for some dirt road camping type stuff, but it's, there's no overlap now. Like the Tahoe, I had this awkward overlap. In an upcoming video, I'll take this thing for a rip up the canyon and tell you how I got it, a little bit more about it. And you know, we got we started our list, got underneath there, we got what do we need? Tires, brakes, uh, one half shaft up here in the front and whatever else, you know? Um, probably start doing the fluids, tune-up type stuff. We'll kind of got to get a sense of those things, but all in all, this thing is a cream puff. It's wonderful. High miles, but absolutely pristine. So stay tuned for some fun videos on this thing. I absolutely love it. And that guy right there, we're going to get that in the dirt. Thank you guys so much for watching. Until next time, enjoy your drive. All right. That was a good day.